Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 12.2, angles and angle measure. Let's start off with some vocab words. First vocab word is standard position. Standard position is an angle position so that its vertex is at the origin and its initial side is along the positive x-axis. So if we go down here, here we have the initial side positioned along the x-axis. Initial side is the fixed ray of an angle. And then we have the terminal side down here, which is a ray of an angle that rotates about the center. So here's the center. The terminal side is rotating about the center, and the center is along or is at the origin. So now we are asked to draw an angle with the given measure in standard position. Well, 210 degrees, where is that? Well, here is zero, we go up to 90, and then to 180. So 210 is plus 30 past 180. So we have to draw that angle. So I'm going to have my initial side right here with the ray on the positive x, and then I'm going to have to go 30 degrees past here. So I'm gonna draw it about like so for my terminal side and so my angle now is 210 degrees we can also go backwards if we start at zero we draw our initial side at that origin and then we have it on positive x and then if we just go down 45 degrees right that's about half a 90 so I go down 45 just about like so and now I have my negative 45 degrees also, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully we know that one whole revolution is 360. Two revolutions would be what? I go around once, I go around again, so I just add 360, right? To get 720, 720 degrees, and then for three revolutions, you would have to add 360 again for 1,080 degrees. Some more vocab words, co-terminal angles now, are angles in a standard position that have the same terminal side. So here we just had initial side to the terminal side, which was 45. But if we continue that rotation, we would just add 360 to that, right, to get 405. And we can keep going around and around and around. If we went around one more time, what would we have to add to this? We would have to add 360 to it, so now this angle would be 735 degrees. Now we are asked to find an angle with a positive measure and an angle with a negative measure. So to find an angle with a positive measure that is coterminal to 210, what do we have to do? You guessed it, we have to add 360 degrees to it. So the positive one would be 570 degrees and then how would you get the negative one? Well, you would just have to subtract. So you can also subtract that 360. If you need to, you can subtract it more than once. Again, if you need to, you can subtract it more than once. Well, we subtract it, we get negative 150 degrees. Some more vocab words thrown at us. We have unit circle, which is displayed down here. It's a circle centered at the origin whose radius is one unit long. Ladies and gentlemen, we are looking at that radius that is one unit long right there is a circle so this is one this is one that's one and that's one a radian now is another way to measure an angle now radians going to take place of some degrees we have degrees and radians now make sure you know and i will show you but make sure you know how to flip your calculator from degrees to radians and if you need help i will definitely show you a radian is an angle that intercepts an arc whose length is one unit. That's why we're using the unit circle up here. One complete revolution around the circle is two pi radians, all right? Two pi radians. One complete revolution in degrees was 360 degrees. 360 degrees is the same thing as two pi. And so the circumference in radians is two pi r. We can move through radians and degrees by using this proportion because we know that one complete revolution is 360 degrees, so we use this proportion where degree measure is over 
360 because that's how many total degrees there are in a circle and radian measure is over 2 pi. So let's go ahead and set something like this up. Here we are given 60 degrees. That is going to go over 360. So it's going to be 60 over 360. We set that equal to r because we do not know the measure of our radians. That goes over 2 pi. Once you set that up, now we just solve the equation. So we cross multiply. 60 times 2 pi is 120 pi. That's going to equal 360 times r. We are solving for r, so we divide by 360. So we have 120 pi divided by 360 equals r. Now we just have to simplify that fraction. We simplify this guy to be, we take out a 120 out of both, so we're left with pi on top, and that all goes over 3. So our radian measure is pi over 3. Radian measures, ladies and gentlemen, will include a pi, right? Radian measures include a pi. So let's try another one. Now with 270, let's go ahead and set that up in our proportion. That's going to go over 360. So 270, that goes over 3. 60, set that equal to r over 2 pi. Now we cross multiply here to here to get 540 pi. That equals 360 r. We divide by 360, so 540 pi divided by 360. That equals R. Simplify now. Now we want to keep it in an improper fraction, so it's going to be 3 pi over 2, and that is our radians. All right, it is 1 and 1 half, but keep it as an improper fraction. You can also have that pi off to the side. Now we went from degrees to radians, so let's go radians to degrees. Now we are given a radian measure. Set that over 2 pi, so it's going to be pi over 12, and now we set that over 2 pi. That equals d that we do not know over 360. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when we cross multiply here, we have to take this whole fraction, this whole pi over 12, take it times 360 to get 30 pi equals and now we can take this 2 pi times d to get 2 pi d. Solving for d, what do we have to divide by? We have to divide by that 2 pi. So it's 30 pi divided by 2 pi to get us d all by itself. And so now d is going to equal, punch this into your calculator, or realize that the pi's cancel out. 30 divided by 2 is 15 degrees. Sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, you will have a pi in your answer, but notice that is degrees. So with 7, again, this is a radian measure, so put it over 2 pi. So we have now d over 360, because I do not know my degrees. That's going to equal negative pi over 2 pi. So now you cross multiply. We take this d times 2 pi just to get 2 pi d. That's going to equal here times here, which is a negative 360 pi. How do we get d by itself? We have to divide by 2 pi, so d equals a negative 360 pi divided by 2 pi. When we simplify, cancel, cancel, 360 divided by 2 is a 180 degrees, but it is negative, so we include that negative sign, also include the de degree sign. Now one more, ladies and gentlemen. I know I said that it's always measured in radians sometimes, you, or is always measured with pi. Sometimes you will find that it's not measured with pi. This one is a radian. If there is no degree measure, it is a radian. So this one is going to go over 2 pi. We set it up as d over 360 equals 1 over 2 pi. We simplify here by cross multiplying to get 2 pi d equals 360. Now when we divide by 2 pi, we get d equals 360 over 2 pi. Let's simplify this so that d equals now 180 over 
pi because that 2 goes into 360 180 times. Now it's over pi. Now please remember this is a degree measure, so I'm going to write it like this. It's 180 over pi because we can't cancel that pi out degrees. Notice when we divided by pi, there was two pi's in our equation, so we could simplify out that pi, or we could cancel out that pi. Since there is no pi up top, we cannot cancel this one out, so we have to leave that pi in there. So our answer is this right here, pi over, or 180, pi, 180 over pi degrees. And finally, a couple more vocab words. We have a central angle, an angle with the vertex at the center of a circle. So our circle, here is our central angle donated, denoted by theta. Arc length is this guy right here, and we can find arc length by radius, radius, which is center of the circle, to here, times our central angle. So what's some of these problems look like? Well, we have a steering wheel on a monster truck has a radius of 11 inches. How far does a point on the steering wheel travel if the wheel makes four-fifths, four-fifths, that is a fraction, of rotation? First thing we have to do is find our central angle. How do we find our central angle? Well, I'm going to put central here first. Central angle. How do we find that? Well, that theta is going to be our four-fifths, and then we have to take that times. Now what is all the way around the circle? That is going to be 2 pi, so our theta, or our central angle, is 8 pi over 5. So now I can use this central angle to find my arc length. Now I'm going to use that to find my arc length, so I'm going to write arc length here. And how do we find that? We have to take a little, we have to take 11 because that is the radius, right? We have to take 11 because that's the radius times 8 pi over 5 because that is the central angle. We are plugging it in for that theta. We multiply that out to get 88 pi over 5. But to non-math people, we don't know what this number is. So punch this in your calculator. 88 times pi divided by 5, that gives us 55.3 when we round. And what are we looking for? We are talking about inches. So it's 55.3 inches. And that's how far that steering wheel does travel. And ladies and gentlemen, that does it for section 12.2, Angles and Angle Measure. Good day.